What's up, Rockstars? Welcome to my Cinco Cushion update. This is covering the Grand Convergence, the final big update they're doing where they're gonna tell us the release window. They're gonna tell us about their next 75 millimeter models. They're gonna tell us about lore, game mechanics, boss mechanics, all sorts of stuff. There is a ton of stuff to go through here. This is gonna be a big video, so stay tuned for some anime, board game, boss battler, fancy mini goodness. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate the videos I make every single week for you guys, and you can give even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate it. There's a link down in the description below. Thank you so very much. By the way, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I was going to do a Cinco Cushion update, but I don't know how this $50 Marvel's Zombies board game with Hero Play came into here in retail. I'm sure come on would have mentioned something about it maybe there's a news video coming up where i'll cover how this was leaked everywhere or and they knew about it or i, I don't know anyway let's let's get to the meat and potatoes here Cinco kushin let's talk about a great game this is going to be super cool when i say great game i mean nobody's played it <laughs> but we're going to discuss how it does play we're going to talk about the mechanics we're going to talk about all sorts of fun stuff it's going to be super cool now before i do i would like to segue right into my sponsor of today's video into the am they have been a long time channel partner this is one of their shirts they make amazing shirts and they have an anime shirt i want to show you now if you didn't know there is a link down in the description below 10 percent off your entire order even works on sales works on everything use that link down below trust me that code will work it'll save you some money definitely good it's almost like getting free shipping they actually have a three for six graphic tee up now so you can get three shirts amazing quality i stand by them 100 you will love them i promise look at this stare down tee how perfect is that they got some anime eyes staring at you some some like angry waifu stuff going on there for, for you guys and of course if you want the retro synth wave glow in the dark shirt or the melting planet things or anything like that there is a ton of stuff in here, they are constantly making some fantastic, some super cool shirts. Get compliments all the time. Love them to death. Link down in the description below. Show them some love. They support channels just like mine because they believe in honest work and good work and consistent hard hustle. And that's what they're all about. And they show it here. And I try to reflect that in how I run this channel as well. Now let's go ahead and dive in. Speaking of hustle, we got to get through a lot of stuff. So let's go ahead and do just that. Okay, so the first little bit is just some fluff. Now, the fluff is always interesting, but this isn't really pertinent to the actual update per se, so I'm not going to do too much on this bottom part. This top part is literally just world building stuff, which is great, but you don't need to really get into here. Um, we're getting into a little bit stuff here, but again, this isn't super necessary as well. It's talking about essentially uh, goddesses and, and uh, the, these different worlds that they make and all this. It, it's it's fine, but again, not really need to get for the rest of this update. This is one of the characters they were talking about. All right, so again, we're still kind of talking about all that. You can pause the video if you want to look. That is totally fine. Uh, you can read up on that, but it's not really a big thing yet. This is, again, just world building, more fluff, stuff like that. Now that you got to this image, this is where the update really starts, okay? And this is a wonderful image. I still love this. I would love a big canvas art print of this if I could. I would totally have that. That is, It's amazing. Okay, so the foundations of Yamashiro. If you don't know, Yamashiro is the city that you're kind of uh, not inhabiting, but uh dealing with it's a city kind of it's almost like the wheel of time scenario there's like a cycles of time and futures and stuff like that there's actually some like time travel stuff we're going to get into that there's 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 a lot here so let's go ahead and start but really what this is talking about is a again a thousand year old shinto goddess and a thousand year old female attendants and uh they, they essentially did a foundation uh, like spell that nobody saw this foundation ritual sorry not a spell and not even the valiant heroes which is like bolded and capitalized but we never you know really dive into it too much saw this this is some secret foundation ritual that foundation stuff will come into play in a few other uh, ports as well but it talks about festivals talks about dances talks about rituals those are all important and the this ritual on this yamashiro uh city is important as well so the first bit of information we're going to get is lore points. Lore points allow you to kind of uncover lore uh, at the secret archives facility. You, you purchase points. It's like a currency, essentially. Um, you can get them from like menace cards, uh, and then you can get them uh, various other ways as well. You get blue ones, which are more like 
informational, like a uh, psychology in the invisible world. We'll talk about the visible world towards the end. And then you have these red ones, which uh, unlock more adult themes. By adult themes, they mean like uh, blood sacrifices and psychological diseases and stuff like that. Like, like just really dank secret stuff going on there. And notice they actually have this uh, silhouetted here. I think that's on purpose. We'll see a silhouette later that looks kind of like that. Um, so you'll you'll get these lore points through minutes cards and other various things that you're doing. And then you can go and do that. See, it says gain two lore points or, you know, uh, investigate, spend three AP and gain one lore point. And then you can spin those to essentially learn more about the world and receive immediate unlocks. Um, we're going to talk about campaign cycles and playing this game multiple times towards the end as well. The end is really the, the majority. So I'm going to move quickly through this beginning part uh, be, because a lot of this is fluff and world building and stuff that we've kind of been through before. For instance, um, this uh, incident of Yamashiro is this kind of real big issue that happened. Suffice it to say, the big thing that came out of it is this, the curse of Nirvana. Now, this is where plants start like growing in you and growing out of you. And eventually it does kill you. But what it also does is brings you insight, brings you uh, all these different um, inspirations and almost memories and a deeper knowledge. And so the idea is, well, it's the, it's Nirvana, but it's like a curse because eventually you die. There's a rumor that one person was able to withstand it and not die and reached pure Nirvana and learned and knew everything and that, that sort of kind of fluffy stuff here. Um, you can see here, this is like a disease level rule. So you're going to get these psychological diseases, I think is what this is going to be counted as. And this disease, you can do different things depending on social bonds you have. And these tiers of uh, Yuma or Yuma or whatever it is, that's another kind of currency you can gain. Often through encounters, you'll be able to get them on the battlefield and stuff like that and, and through various other means. And you can get quite a few of them, but you use them a lot as well and, and a whole bunch of stuff. We'll, we'll, you'll see that repeated constantly. Just another currency you can think of it as. And this last one here, I'm going to point out this. Rip off a root from your body. Small pieces of flesh remain attached to the sprout. Suffer two unblockable damage. Then roll 1d10. Add your mind on a 10+. plus. Gain the Defier of Fate technique. Uh, so these techniques we're going to learn again towards the end. That's where most of the gameplay stuff is. Suffice it to say, you can learn techniques and then teach it to other people even for even cheaper. In other words, you can train your your, your friends, stuff like that, depending, I'm sure, on the technique. Perhaps that's when you need to be, you need to have this uh, Curse of Nirvana. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll we'll find out. But uh, as you can see, this guy reached the true freedom, that, or that one person, whatever that true freedom is. And then they mention a successor of the tree, and then they show this. The interesting part about here, besides the amazing art, is the moth boss we know there's a moth boss here and you see these kind of like wings coming out but then notice there's like people and then out of the eyeballs and out of the mouths are like these kind of almost like looks like tails but it could also be the the fluffy antennas of a moth or something like that this looks very much a uh, moth related so that's kind of what i'm digging in here besides the fact that this art is just amazing and then you can see that there is some blood going on here as well um some kind of sacrifice and blood and blood's a big thing as well but uh yeah so you're going to use these uh tiers of uh, yumi tokens when you first get them you can use them and you gain a bonus like plus one strength stuff like that and you can use them uh as as again like bartering tools to do different things as well so you get that immediate temporary bonus um but then you can also use them uh, like i said kind of later on too there's a close-up of that uh, again it's highlighting the, the blood a bit more you can see it here divine disease so it's kind of a different disease this is during a psi roll that little symbol there is a greek symbol for psi you can think of it like a mind ignore the rolled icons instead choose one um, it, it essentially lets you manipulate the dice on that one it's kind of all that's doing there some more lore now we're talking about the blood again again blood's kind of a big thing here so you can become a blood edge you are blood edge uh, you may suffer one unblockable damage to each combatant stance to gain plus one armor and add a blood tag to all of your equipped protections i'm assuming it's like a gear equipment stuff until the end of the encounter so it's for the encounter um, and then there's a few things here and you can do the same kind of stuff here there's some more things that you get through here and nothing major, nothing super new here. The biggest thing here is the crows minus one. If you recall from my last update where I covered this, the crows in the city matter. And so balancing that again, it's kind of like a resource. There's a lot of these various systems at play. You can almost think of it as like one of those free to play MMOs in that sense, in that you're managing different levels of resources and maybe using one to gain bonuses here, but being mindful of not many, you know, getting too much lower on something like that. However, one thing I will note, and I'll note this later as well, is that there's not a clear path 
path towards success or defeat. The, it really, you do what you do, and that evolves the story around it. So the story will match your actions, but it's not like you're like, oh my gosh, I got too many crows, game over, defeat, I've, I've lost. Like, it's it's not that kind of game, or really, if that makes sense. Instead, it's going to dynamically evolve around what your decisions are, and bad things can happen, of course, or good things might happen, or a little bit of a gray area, right? Uh, but you, you'll see that later specifically. I'll, I'll talk about that with a boss. Um, okay, so moving off of the Curse of Nirvana now, and again, it's just talking about that, you know, that sort of stuff. You have the Dark Truce of Yamashiro. This is, again, just kind of going through some lore. We're talking about the sacrifices in Curse of Nirvana. The sacrifices are important. Every new moon at the end of the month, the sacrifices must be performed. So in this city, in this world, there's essentially these goddesses, or not goddesses, there's these uh, priestesses that are, are priest priestess, priestess. That's a weird word. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. There's these uh, priests, uh, ladies that uh, do these visual or do these um, uh, uh, special events throughout. They have several of these. One of these is a sacrifice that must be performed, and you have to make a decision on that. Now, there is a warning here. Visual violence in the image below. I appreciate them actually saying that. I think that's very respectful towards people who might be interested in this, but it, even if you're not against it, it's nice to kind of prepare. So there is something here. It's it's beheading, by the way. It's not um, it's, it's normal anime cartoon stuff, and it's not the super big focus of there, but it is there. So we're going to scroll down there, and you can kind of see, again, she was beheaded there, and it's this kind of stylized thing obviously there's this portal here though in a shinto gate which is kind of interesting they don't mention that but they show some kind of portal like doorways later we'll talk about that now it's talking about an age rating here it's not saying it's like you know pg-13 or anything like that it's just saying hey there's going to be some intense themes here um and then while they're not um handled in a way that's like immature it's not like a south park kind of maturity um but it is it's more like uh the last of us kind of maturity if you know those two ips and hopefully that kind of kind of help explain or maybe even like a, um, a game of thrones style maturity so hopefully that kind of sets the tone for you there it's not all like that but there are aspects of that like having to sacrifice like this like it, it, it even like i think it even mentions either here or oh yeah right here so uh, to make the sun crow manifest himself a miko priestess must be killed and buried at night for he will come to take her corpse behind the sun whatever that means the izumi temple will cooperate offering you an unaware young maiden named yoko she is kind motherly to her sisters and loves to play the shamashin or shemison or whatever that is that last little bit there's just to make her matter now obviously it'd be easier just to actually make her a character that you've grown and made a social bond with we'll talk about social bonds in a little bit stuff like that but it, it doesn't have to be that way because honestly in the story you wouldn't necessarily know this person but you do know that she's like a legit person and you can kind of see she's represented in that model there i showed the model i think off last time too it's a big crow holding holding this person that's what that is essentially you leave her out there and the crow's like oh thank you i'm gonna take her behind the sun and then you're like haha i get to interact with you now I get to engage with you and notice the miko minus one and sins plus one so uh, obviously the miko Priesti priestess is lowered right that's a resource lowered but then your sin resource is raised so again these things are all kind of going there and if you have tamo her social bond is hurt as well uh, you can think of that as if you did the telltale video games the they will remember that kind of like that or if you you've done any sort of um you know knights of the order public or any kind of bioware game like that mass effect stuff like that you'll you'll get those minuses and negatives or like i didn't like that and the, you know krogan's like ah that's awesome you punched him or whatever so that's what that's all about here now this talks about the current week there is a time thing we'll cover that in more detail so i'm going to skip that for now just know that you can do different interactions to deal with whatever's coming up in this case uh like v v vajara or vajra or vajra or whatever this moth person is that's a moth right there you can engage with them you can indulge in the dream to do different things like gain a blue lore point and then perform a why father event so there's an event there or an engagement there engagements are normally encounters they require uh more time and then of course you can also just discard them say i'm not dealing with them right now and different things will happen there in this case more stress less morale stuff like that okay but you can use notice a blue lore point to negate it so these systems are all interacting with each other constantly that blue lore point you can use to purchase things the blue lore point you can gain through through different uh menace cards and that blue lore point you can now also use to negate a negative effect while you don't deal with a boss right now so there's all these different things going on and these interaction points that you'll see constantly now this is really neat this is talking about kind of two heroes here and they've featured two heroes periodically and what they're talking about here really is that not only 
only do these people have like their own like opinions and stuff like that, but them and bosses and everybody um, is kind of um, their own thing. What they're talking about is a lot of times bosses and games are more just like minions to the to the 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 big bad. Right. So there's a big bad and then these bosses that just work for them. These bosses are, are not like that. Instead, they all have their own purposes and sometimes they'll even align with you. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes, they, you know, you, you, you have to deal with them even though you don't want to or stuff like that. There's you know, mentions of sacrifices and stuff like that. There's connections to them. This is just a cool picture of a lot of the different bosses. I don't know if it's everything or not. And they do a lot of this kind of stuff as well, where they, they, they're, they're showing a lot of text here. I really liked this, by the way. Uh, that's nice, too. You can pause the video at any time to, of course, read all this. This is interesting. It's talking about one of them. This beast right here essentially is like cursed and this reincarnation of the guardian beast. So this this beast here eventually turns into the boss. And so you have to kind of deal with that and notice the hunting, you know, uh, even like children and stuff like that. Like it's bad, really bad. Turns into that boss there. You've seen that one with the, its white fur, but it has that same single eye. So this is the other form of it before it turns into that essentially. And so there's this thing of, you know, do you appease it? Do you attack it? Do you deal with it? Whatever. And it's like right outside the, the town there. Okay, starting heroes. This is important. This There's some cool stuff here as well. So you start out with four different heroes. You have this lady right here, and she essentially has like um, uh, going towards her. It says here, incredible tales told by my father, blah, blah, blah. But unfortunately, I lost my father when I was too young. They res they resolve this right away, so I don't think it's really a, a, a hint, but you actually work with her father, um, and so you can kind of interact with him. But she was on the search for him, and she was like a performer with masks and stuff like that. She's a ranged person here. That's really her, her big thing, is that she has this kind of like ninja suit and then these uh, throwing knives things so she's flanking and ranged and each person starts with a bounty card which teaches you a different aspect of the game so when you're first starting out you have these like starting um uh bounty cards that give you bonuses like a cat mask stuff like that again masks are part of her lore um it, if, if you do things in her case it's a gather one remnant and destroy two shadows okay so it'll teach you different ways of how to do this and in this case it talks about interacting with environment that's the remnant and attacking minions that's the shadows Okay. Then you also have this guy here, essentially his uh, younger brother is better at him than everything. And so he kind of has to like prove himself and, you know, find out who he really is and stuff like that. Um, his big thing is discarding two posture cards and the reward is a tier of Yume, which again are very useful for a myriad of reasons. The posture card um, it teaches you about the different postures. So you can be, you know, a high posture, mid posture, or low posture. That's covered in this as well, so we'll cover that very shortly, uh, a little bit lower down. So I'm not going to dig into that, uh, but you gain a, a thing there too. So let's talk about uh, posture breaking and stuff like that. Again, just different aspects of the game. Uh, it's, so each person's kind of learning that and is driven towards a natural learning that very smart design decision. Okay, so she's pretty much just all attack. Uh, this uh, Nobunuga uh, clan killed essentially most of her clan and her family. Uh, so th they are very big in the lore here. They're mentioned many, many times. And essentially, she was trying to get revenge and kill everybody that attacked, uh, you know, her family. But this mechanical warrior beat, the, beat her to it. So now she must destroy the mechanical warrior. That gives her a uh, reason to be there, essentially. And again, she has another one where she wants to do a front wound and a back wound. So it's talking about, um, you know, dealing with different zones and attacking different areas of a boss. Again, allowing you to kind of learn more about that. And she can actually do that because her her uh, codine or codein or whatever it is allows you to essentially tack and move, right? Uh, okay, so that's her. And now also kind of related because also uh, part of that same uh, 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 I I Iga Ryu independent republic clan, the Nobunaga defeated him as well. However, he's a little bit different. He actually joined the bad guys and tried to bring peace that way. And when he did that, he realized that, hey, they're just people too wanting to do their own thing. In other words, my enemy is not just some mindless person to hate. They're not like the Nazis or something like that. Instead, they actually have their own reasoning and stuff like that and ends up you know, being treated like uh, the, the guy tr treats him like it's his own son and stuff like that. So ends up kind of fighting for them. 
that matters, that lore matters because his thing is a psychology of things, actually engaging with um, uh, people through their mind and not just violence. He's the first one to suggest that, and his bounty actually does that, raise the psychology value two times. So again, encourages you to not just hit everything with a sword until it dies, but actually doing these different engagements. So that's kind of the four starting characters, and that's what makes them kind of unique there, which is cool. So here is Umeke. This is a fantastic redo of a sculpt. These pupils are just there for the render, by the way. The, the actual miniature won't have that. Um, so this is one of the main characters, that first one with the the, the, the big rope is, I, th I think, her most dynamic thing, but with the knives, right, that she can, that the kunai, I think they called it, that she can throw as well. I love that her headband has that too, but they re-sculpted her and improved her, so they're kind of showing that. One interesting thing there is she does have this post. They thought about making it clear, um, but it's definitely there, and again, it's a flat base. Not all of their bases are flat, so it's kind of interesting on when they decided it is going to be flat versus not. They just decided to actually not put rubble there or whatever because it made it look like she's you know not as balanced as they're trying to make her though then i don't know what our options are for basing i guess i'll have to kind of play around with that an interesting choice i don't know if i'm actually sold on it or not for the most part though i think this render looks great the rope looks really good the hair super dynamic the very dynamic pose here um i think that if i if, i like how it, there's even like the band on the on the socks right so it's it's nice and, and separated and good uh the only thing i think i would say here is that even if it is a like a, a you know like an assassin bodysuit it doesn't actually grab the butt like that like that's this kind of silliness that's that's very comic book stuff right that it doesn't actually do that kind of thing kind of like the whole navel thing too right you know where it's like oh it looks like they're not wearing anything kind of silliness but besides that very believable actually in kind of how it is this is her father by the way this is that father that we're talking about so my daughter is now a little statue meant for painting the world in evolved in such a curious way indeed the reason that doesn't make sense is because her lore is that there are sightings of her father from years later now but the sightings are as if he hasn't aged today. So there's some oddity around time. Again, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But suffice it to say, he doesn't like he's aged at all. Okay. Okay. So here is another one. This is another update. This is to the kind of the warrior chick, the first one that wants to kill the mechanical thing. So she has a more um, a, a more interesting thing. The first one was kind of her being a little static. And this one, she's actually kind of pushing forward a little bit. You can see with the race, but she's kind of pushing forward, but in a very graceful kind of smooth motion. I actually really, really enjoy pretty much everything about this. Uh, this little detail here will be interesting to see how this shows up, as well as the stuff on her on her face and stuff like that. A lot of times that can get really muddy and very soft in detail, so they're going to have to work on that. But they are doing hips minis, 38 millimeter, so it's it, it definitely can do it. I'm not... I don't think any, they're not doing anything here that isn't doable for sure. It'll just be very interesting to make sure to get that right. That's kind of the hard part there. Okay, and they're talking about miniature collectors. They talk about 75 millimeter production stuff. By the way, this is an example. I'm going to have an unboxing soon. The reason I haven't had an unboxing is this is actually, you're seeing it more than I have. Um, is because right now I only have the bus. I'm getting the whole big thing. I want to show it all at once for you guys. I was hoping to get it in time for this, but I still haven't gotten that the, the big one yet. I know a lot of you have, but I've been waiting on that for a while. So... I have two busts plus that, and I will be, of course, painting them and enjoying them and, and telling you guys about it. I might do a video. I guess let me know if you if you want me to do a video. Okay, so let's go into the sneak peek. This is probably the next 75 millimeter. Again, you remember that um, red lore? This looks this looks similar. Like this part here, I think, was in that red lore. If you ask me, that was the same thing. So whoever this person is, and they have some weirdness on their blades. Um, that I don't know if it's like medallions on the blunt part of the blade, like like little like little you know like trinkets and circles and stuff like that. Um, it, it could it could maybe be like barnacles and stuff. I mean, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. But there's some stuff going on there. Talks about the sorrowful dance there. Okay, so we can and again this is another one, same kind of thing. We can move on from that. Uh, talking about these guys are kind of like the white cloaks from Wheel of Time. You can think they essentially are like hey. We're here to investigate this like weird disease where you guys grow plants and like find out information. We're gonna take you in. We're gonna figure out what it is, even if you have to die while we figure it out. So that's kind of what his his thing is there. Okay, a week in Yamashiro. The reason it says a week is because that's kind of the basic structure of a session in this game, not including one-offs. We'll talk about one-offs in a little bit too. I know this is a lot. It is a lot. Hopefully, I'm speeding things along for you guys, so you don't have to necessarily read all of this, and I can kind of piece things together for you guys. So. 
a game session that you'd sit down as pretty much this week thing. In the week thing, you get three time points each. So each person gets three time points and then you can spin that as you wish, but you do want to plan. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. So for instance, you can go to the forge and then you can spend one time point to go there. It takes some time to go there, right? A Teneris does a similar thing as well. Uh, it's kind of a, a it, it's not the most unique mechanic, but it is an interesting mechanic where you have these tokens and you're able to do certain things. Um, so uh, you can do stuff like repair and craft. Crafting is the main way you do get gear in this game. So it's, it, it's not so much about um, looting as it is about getting resources and then turning that into new gear. So you can graph you can craft and repair here and do some other things. You can work on your uh, social bonds so you can spend time with people and kind of do that and gain ranks in that. And those will evolve in different ways. Uh, so when a hero gains a tier of EMA, they receive plus one token to an attribute of their choice. Again, those things are very valuable. Like, like I said, plus one strength, stuff like that. So very good there. There's another social bond here. It's kind of working here. This is again, that, that hit her father, right? So his father, can, can we speak of her, whatever her is? And he's like, oh, no. I'm assuming either a sister or a mother on that part. Um, and then you can do two points each for each person that wants to do this to do that engage. Remember that current week, this is that same kind of thing where you can do an engage and this one you can do a diplomacy to go do essentially an encounter, an event or something like that. And then you can discard to do something else. In this case, we're not dealing with it. Guess what? You can do the new victim event. That doesn't sound very good. New victim event does not sound good. Don't ignore these guys. And this is uh, before they kind of alluded to this. That essentially you can just like not deal with a boss, but the longer you let them chill, they're going to be doing their own thing. Things are going to happen. You probably don't want to just let them chill forever. You got to deal with them at some point. So that's kind of one of the things here. You can you keep buffing up the city, keep buffing up your 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 stuff and crafting new stuff and repairing and healing and doing all that stuff. And all that's great and important, but you also need to deal with that because every single week, there could be more than one of these. One of the things to mention here is that you could have um, more than just this guy showing up. They don't just wait for each other one at a time. And so you kind of have to deal with that. So daily life in Yamashiro, this is talking about some of the things you can do. Again, you can build facilities and those give you more options to spend more time tokens you can craft. These are the little time tokens there. Uh, you can learn techniques. Again, if you learn a technique, you can then teach it to your 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 other heroes for a cheaper price because obviously you're, you're just going to, you already know what you're doing here. This is how you do it. Let me show you kind of thing. You can again do the social bonds. Uh, you can do some healing. Very important, but again, it takes up time or those encounters which you Again, takes up two. So building facilities takes up all three. So it's a very big investment. That's like that's what I'm doing this 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 entire week. Crafting, you can do a little bit of. You can do a little bit of social bonds. You can do a little bit of learning techniques and stuff like that. A little bit of healing, and then of course those encounters. Again, they take two each. So that's that's very big. There, you're trying to decide. Are we going to invest in the city? Are we going to invest in dealing with this big threat here or bad things are going to happen? And eventually bad things are going to happen. You're just going to have to deal with it. So talking about the social bonds and expanding those, again, it's going to be very quick. They say it's just marking a box or unmarking a box. It's not a big thing. It's like, oh, hey, Katsumi loves that. And oh, Aizen hates that. And you know, Hioma really hates that, right? And you can kind of see their little reactions here. I hope that's in the game too, where they actually, you actually hear the responses. I think that would be lovely. And then of course, there are people that will fundamentally change they will leave your party. They might become an enemy. Who knows what happens? But if they have a connection to the person or they very much are against what you did, you might just lose them forever. So these will be major story events that trigger uh, depending on the what, what happened with that social bond. And single cushion, you cannot walk through all the paths in a single playthrough. Again, we will talk about those very soon. It's actually coming up here. Let's talk a little bit about festivals and calendars. These festivals are essentially milestones in the game. They have to be done. They don't take up time and they're very big events where different things happen. They automatically trigger during the campaign. Now they do not cost, like I said, any, any uh, time points and they essentially uh, are tweaked based off of where you're at in the city. So you're going to come again, it's kind of like a calendar thing. So you're spending each week, spending each week and suddenly, oh, hey, it's the, the, the festival of whatever, right? Uh, the T Tanabata festival. Okay. So that's happening and that's great. But then it'll be like, okay, well, is the city like this right now? Then that is like that right now. Then like that. I suspect it has to do with whether or not you've dealt with encounters, whether or not um, there's a certain amount of crows or a certain amount of sins or something like that, right? It's going to check all the various things you've been maintaining and dealing with and the decisions you've made and then kind of tweak based off that. Okay, so there, there's the New Year, the Festival of the Crows, Flower Festival, Watasumi Festival, the Stars Festival and Foundation, and it even says which ones are made up or not, which I think is kind of cool. I like that. 
Okay, so, and then right here, it takes place during the festivals may differ depending on the social bonds the player group has de developed. So again, just what you, where you are at in the story. Okay, so combat system. Let's go through this. This is fairly straightforward. You gain action points. Your turn is an act, and so in each round you have different acts. And in your act, you get action points based off your speed value, and you get to perform those. And then it talks about no limits, over-the-top anime action. And that's that's great, and that's cool, whatever, okay. So one of the big things they're trying to focus on here is you're not gonna feel like you ever wasted your turn. You can move up to 12 spaces if you need to. So it's not just a, oh, I tried to get to where I wanted to, but I couldn't, so that's all I did was move closer. Uh, they're, they're trying to balance it toward that's, that's, that's something that's not gonna happen. So, okay, you gain three AP, low guard. We'll talk about low guard in a little bit, but essentially you can also gain AP a little bit easier. Uh, you can move up to four spaces and you can repeat actions. You can move up to 12 spaces and then you can do an attack action. Attack action requires two APs and then you can spend additional APs to up that as well. You essentially get a D10 for each AP you spend here. Uh, your weapon can have bonus AP. It'd be listed right here. You can get boosted attack sometimes, which will add that. So this adds an extra AP dice essentially to the attack, but it's only used for the attack. And you can spend tension. We'll talk about tension more later, uh, but the tension is what boosts your attack essentially. And then you have different special skills and tags and, and whatnot as well. So here is that tension action right now. So you have this key and this, uh, or chi or however you want to pronounce it. It's used for defensive and luck control. You get three at the start of each week. Tension allows you to boost attacks. You gain them in a variety of different ways during battles. Now, one thing you can do is it's just a flip, right? And so if an attack misses, a hero may convert a chi to one tension. They just flip it over and they do that. So that's where that luck and control maneuvers comes in. You can use those, again, only three per week to kind of be able to help help with mitigate luck and stuff like that. So that's good if you're not going to miss that. Okay, let's talk about the stance maneuvers. Like I said, there's low, medium, and high. High is for pressure. You just activate pressure and re-roll them. So essentially you are able to do some re-rolls and you get some upgrades. Pressure upgrade, gain plus one strength for each grave injury you have. So the more injured you are, the stronger you are. This essentially says, hey, I want to re-roll my dice. Okay, that's the high guard there. The mid guard is more for deflection. You can negate a, essentially a whole combat die, a, a damage that you get if you have those. And again, you can update that too, or you can even hurt them back, kind of a counter attack. You hurt me, or I hurt you by you attacking me. And then the bottom one is more of a maneuver thing, allows you to move back. One of the big things there is nullifying attacks, right? You can just move out of the hole. Uh, you know, if they're attacking for four, well, guess what? You just moved back six or, you know, whatever, that, that, that sort of thing. Let's talk about a shinobi step helps with that. Okay, techniques. Kind of already talked about this a little bit, but you can learn them through social bonds and stuff. But this kind of gives you an example. There's stuff like Armor Breaker, where you get exhausted until the end of this act. So until the end of your turn now, that's that act. Ignore any armor value during your attacks, and you can spend a tension, tension to, ref to refresh. So if you're really tensed up, you have a lot of tension, you can keep doing that and keep piercing their armor. Uh, so stuff like that. They talk about flawless hits. I think I covered that in a previous one, so I won't get into that right now. But you can push X or X is your current tension. So again, the more tension or pressure that you have and stuff like that, the more you can actually do this. Okay, Shinobi tools. These are like uh, magic use items that have a limited use. You put tokens on them and you remove tokens as you use them and they kind of refresh each week. That's kind of what these are. And so there's an example of that with a side eye to help with accuracy, and you, but you gain a mark token. So you gain kind of a, um, a target on your head if you do that. Okay, psychology. Notice they're showing this guy again. Again, the guy with the glasses is the one that kind of teaches you that from the starting. Um, so he and then it, it's covering this again. This is actually kind of old news here with the shadow uh, machina, where it's like it's this armor with the shadows and infesting it, and you can kind of talk to the shadow because the robot is kind of like I am a robot. Maybe. There are three things, empathy, provocation, intimidation. This is what I alluded to earlier where there are no clear paths forward. What they've done here and what I appreciate, you can read into this, you can pause the video if you want. I'm not gonna necessarily read into it because it, it doesn't really matter. The point is, is that there is no right answer. It's not like, oh, you're fighting him. Oh, well, be sure to intimidate because everything else doesn't work, but you wanna intimidate, that's the path forward. Because then you go and you play it and you just always intimidate. Instead, you can do any of the three you want. You can do empathy, provocation, intimidation. They can all benefit you and they can all get you different things. And so you have to find those out by doing them. So you're probably going to fight him once and one playthrough and do empathy and then another one do provocation, do another one maybe do intimidation and then maybe another one just do certain attacks and don't worry about that. There's four right there, very different outcomes that you can do. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. First of all, it changes their deck right? Uh, they start to react based off of more fear or more intimidation or, you know, whatever it might be. But notice here that the rewards are different as well. So this, remember, is empathy. And then this one is the provocation and then intimidation down here. And so they have different things like more rewards, stuff like that, or maybe an easier fight. 
But then notice that that this one, at least, if you get a nine in that, birth of the other event. So you actually gain an event that is only through that path that you don't get otherwise. So that's very interesting to see. The invisible roll. Let's talk about this. This is where things get a little kind of wonky. This is where there's a little bit of a spin on things, right? Um, we've known for a long time that there's something weird about this city, about this area, about this time. It has to do with gods and goddesses and thousand year old promises and all this other kind of stuff. Well, let's talk about the invisible world. Now, one of the interesting things they say here is that the Vedic scholars see it as the world of truth and beyond the veil of illusion. In other words, what they were kind of saying, and this kind of reminds me of the, um, oh, what is it? The, the true knowledge or whatever it was from the, the curse of the Nirvana. There's essentially this, this veil of reality that they're in that they don't feel is correct. They think that there is some other reality that is actually there. And whether it's a curse in Nirvana where trees are growing out of your face and that's how you figure it out, or whether it's going through these invisible worlds and these encounters here to be able to learn more about it. And then they talk about a pure land. In other words, a land that isn't with this weird uh, veil of illusion around it, um, full of lakes and lotus flowers and blah, 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 blah. Now here is the door to the invisible. And again, it, this is like a major thing, but it kind of reminds me of that Shinto gate. Remember there's that Shinto gate with the, um, uh, the, the little portal kind of thing there where the beheading was. Okay. They talk about invisible scenarios, talk about time phantasms, and then talks about different events. Let's go through that and actually, uh, kind of go, go through that right now. So door to the invisible, right? All this kind of stuff. Invisible resonance. The individual establishes a link between their body and the visible world. So when you're going and doing these like um, uh, different invisible scenarios, you have these special things you can do. And I don't know what the what the the resources that they're using here, but essentially you can do stuff like for each two identical icons rolled for hero, you get to get different guard points. Or this other one on the right, you get to do essentially a lot of this lightning damage through your psi, essentially. So you're able to kind of do that. These time phantasms are interesting, and this is where um, that guy's or that that lady's uh father kind of comes into play and where they're, they're talking about thousand year old stuff and whatnot essentially you can bring somebody back from a different time period a different timeline a different dimension a different w version of the world now what the, this is why i said it's kind of like a wheel of time kind of thing here now what this allows you to do from not a, not a lore perspective but from an actual gameplay perspective, is this bottom part. Summoning a time phantasm is particularly useful when playing in a group, no players left behind. That's because during the story, a character might leave or a character might have to do something time critical. Or a character might be going on a walkabout or they might be bored and drunk in the tavern and you left them, right? Whatever, for whatever reason, they're not there. Now, if you play as that character, you're like, well, what happened to my character? Do I not play? No, you can bring a time phantasm, another version of that character in and still play with that version of that character so that you can still play. Now, how that it's involved, how you level them up, do they come with their own gear? Do they come with different gear? What's going on there? I don't know. Don't know. We'll find out. But that's the idea. So you can continue to play and kind of bring these alternate timeline version people there that come from a different world sort of different. And we'll, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Invisible scenarios. Again, no cost and a time point. These are special encounters that take place in the memories of your character or in a possible alternative timeline. Now, I know this is memories, a possible alternative timeline. And it says here that it does not modify a uh, boss's psychological or physical statistics like a normal encounter. But I will point out that like a normal encounter, that doesn't mean it doesn't. It just doesn't do it like a normal encounter. That's because there are the necessary means through which the heroes can explore the horrific past of Yamashiro and find a key to freeing it from its doomed destiny. So I think there's some kind of melding where you can go in here and you can get different stuff, but then there's still bonuses. Because, because, see if we get there. Hopefully, we'll Invisible scenarios may be the way to reveal new possibilities for an expected future. Okay, we've done that one session games. You can kind of do this as a quick one session thing. If you don't have your whole group or something, you can go on there and you can still gain benefits in the campaign from it. So it's almost like you get to bring something back or maybe you gain some sort of resource that you can use or I'm not sure exactly how it works. They don't go into it. They just say that it's not a waste of time either. It's not like a completely devoid you know, thing. Maybe it's lore points. Maybe that's it because it's talking about going and learning more. Maybe that's it. Uh, but that's kind of the idea there. You can unlock stuff from the campaign for with your current game that way. And then replayability, new game plus. So we've talked about this kind of time thing, right? An alternate timeline, stuff like that. 
essentially what they're saying here is that as you're going to go through, Yamashiro is stuck in this loop and you're just going to keep repeating the past mistakes of that, but it's never quite the same. So you're kind of having to go, this New Game Plus specifically, it's not just replayability, it's an I replayed the same thing on its own. New Game Plus is I'm carrying over and doing more things and doing different things. As it said at the very beginning, you're not going to be able to uncover everything the first time through. You're not going to be able to get it all there. So you're going to be working towards this in kind of a roguelike nature where you're going to replay the game through the campaign and then do another one and then do another one and then do another one and eventually get to maybe maybe i missed here the true ending so there is a true ending to this game what happens at that point i don't know we'll have to find out but the idea is you're going to play through this enough times to where eventually you do find the truth you do get to that true ending and you have completed Sengokushin, at least this version of it, the Five Sacrifices version of it, or or whatever the subline is. Okay, now after that, they just talk about um, three years and spinning time and miniature collectors and all this, and these people with amazing talent painted these. Uh, feel free to look at these. This is all linked down in the description below, of course. But I'm going to go and skip past a lot of this because there is a little bit more, and that's a release window. So let's go ahead and talk about that because that'll be. This is that old model, like I said. Now, now she's blade back, moving forward like that, as opposed to like that. So a much better, much better pose in my opinion, but still a great mini. Okay, so almost there. Okay, this is their summer pinup. If you recall, they showed art of some of the uh, people in their uh, like swimwear and stuff like that. This is the first one they're doing. This is Umeke here in the, uh, the the kind of pinup here. It is changed because this is the art that they had. And obviously they went a little bit skimpier on that, but that's kind of the idea there. Uh, they're talking about special things. They're talking about miniature collectors, stuff like that. It's going to be limited just like Tomo and all the others. So they're definitely going to be collectible stuff and it's a purposeful collectible thing right but again i mean you 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 saw the detail they're they're amazing minis they're fantastically well built good quality there you can tell because resin it, it, you have to know how to pour it really well you, there's expensive machinery often with like vacuum chambers and stuff like that there's good quality resin and then not so good quality resin it's a good quality resin here and now kickstarter plans well barring any kind of weirdity here or they're going to be doing Q4 2022 for launch. But one thing they are promising is continued communication, more communication than before. Now that they've gotten to this point, they're ready to start communicating until they get to there. And they make a big post to not only, or make a big point to talk about post Kickstarter experience also being excellent. I feel, and this is me assuming here, they did obviously haven't said this or told me this or anything like that, but I feel it's a direct response to Kingdom Death Monster and that the post KS experience of Kingdom Death Monster has been abysmal. They're hoping to essentially avoid that, which I think is a smart thing to do. And they're not calling out any company. That's me reading into that, but that's been this whole thing is me trying to piece things together. So they've specifically called out a post campaign experience that's great. So I'm hoping it's more like Aeon Trespass Odyssey and less like Kingdom Death and in that in that regard but q4 2022 i will obviously keep you guys updated and they have one more look here saying hey there's more to come guys that is it that was a lot there it was a lot of reading um a lot of kind of summarizing i was trying to piece together past updates and where we're at right now if there are future updates like this i will keep you guys posted either in news videos that i wrap up or i'll talk about Random, you know, Marvel Zombies, uh, you know, $50 boxes going to retail or whether it's another little Senko, Senko Cushion update. I doubt there'll be a big one like this again. And if there is, it'll be towards the very end, right before launch. But they've shown quite a bit here. We've had a few of these now and uh, there's, there's a lot of gameplay info here to kind of get and piece together and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask. And of course, stay tuned for more news coverage just like this. If you appreciate the video, leave a like on your way out. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye, guys.